This was announced in the New York Times in 2005. King David's palace is found. <laughs> the thing that Kenyon said is not there, don't look, just forget it. An Israeli archaeologist says he's uncovered in the East Jerusalem what may be the fabled palace of the biblical King David. King Tyre sent messengers to David with cedar trees, carpenter, stone masons. They built a house for David. So King Tyre is, Tyre is the, the capital of Phoenicia, and he's building a house for David. Of course, he married his daughter. And so we would look for a Phoenician-style palace in the middle of Jerusalem, which would be you know, rather easy to identify, and that's exactly what Alot Mazar has found. She's with Hebrew University. It was her grandfather who found those steps on the southern part of the Temple Mount that uh, there beside the Gate Beautiful. Where is this monumental building? Well, <laughs> here is a monumental building that she found. It is huge. This is what was uncovered actually just... Uh, this picture was able to be taken this year, and that's just a part of it. It continues on the other side of the street. It's at least six stories high. And from this picture on the other side of the street where we were working this past summer, you can see the levels as it goes down and down and down. It is huge. Monumental is uh, <laughs> almost a trivial word by comparison. And it was a joy to be able to work there and to be able to help excavate this. You can get a little bit of idea of the work that's going on. Looking at the pottery, we found that this was clearly identified. Some of it pictured here in place as it was being uncovered is from the 10th century, which is definitely identifying it as the time of David. The location is seen just below the Temple Mount, as indicated here by this square. And notice her description of how she found it. And this is from the New York Times. Archaeology is technical, but you dig with a mind open to historical sources, and anything can help. I work with the Bible in one hand, the tools of excavation in the other, and try to consider everything. One of the main clues in finding David's palace, says Mazar, was surprisingly from the Bible itself. David, uh, 2 Samuel 5, 17, uh, heard about it, went down from his palace to the citadel. He knew where the citadel was. The palace has to be up above. And so she published in one of the technical journals, this is where the Bible says it ought to be. I need to raise some money. I want to go dig. This is a test of what the Bible says before anything was found. And that's where she dug, and she found it just exactly as she had published that she should find it. Notice the way this is analyzed, I think, scientifically in one of the commentaries there from Jerusalem. We have a biblical text describing in detail the creation of a Phoenician-style palace by David high up on a particular mountain. You've got a particular mountain, you've got a Phoenician-style palace, we've got the text describing it, around the end of the 11th, beginning of the 10th century, uh, before the current era. Then we have a grand structure, the Phoenician style, dating from the same time on the summit of that very mountain located with the assistance of the text and previous archaeological discoveries. This was not stumbled upon, moreover, but carefully hypothesized, and the current dig was proposed as a test. The likelihood of this happening by chance is extremely small. And I think you just have to say amen. This is the way science should proceed. It did and it's confirmed. Sorry, liberals, that's just the way it is. <laughs> Jane Cahill was telling the truth when she says there's a supposed lack of archaeological evidence. And she's not over the top when she says, in most cases, the arguments denying this are grossly misleading, illogical, disingenuous, or, as I would say, all three or to put it in Texas terms, they're just lying through their teeth when they say there is no evidence for the city of David. Grossly misleading, illogical, and disingenuous. We'll conclude with a statement again by Adam Zetrel. He's been surveying Manasseh now for 20 years, beginning as an atheist and winding up as a believer. He says, after years of research, however, I believe it's impossible to explore Israel's origins without the Bible. Again and again, we have seen the historical value 
of the Bible. Again and again, we've seen that an accurate memory has been preserved in its transmuted narratives. Waiting to be unearthed and exposed, not just by imagined stories in the Sunday school lesson, but by archaeological fieldwork and critical mind work. This is uh, referring to his effort there in the Manassas survey. The area is relevant in particular for the reliability of the early Bible. Nearly a thousand new sites. Now, this is what he's found in the 20 years of the survey, just in the Manasseh area. A thousand new sites that can be referenced in Scripture create a new archaeological reality which connects the books of Deuteronomy and Joshua and Judges to the territory where they have happened. Now, a thousand data points is pretty heavy. I mean, that's... How do you argue with that? That's just... I think, unanswerable, which is what he's saying. And so when we consider the actual evidence, apart from the political battles and the religious denials, uh, the evidence is just overwhelming. And we have exactly what Peter commands us to give, a ready defense, a reason for the hope that's in us that will stand and uh, will embarrass the opposition.